In celebration of its first anniversary, there were two HoYoFair livestreams dedicated to showing off amazing fan creations related to Genshin Impact. One was held in English and streamed to the Twitch gaming channel, while the other was in Chinese and streamed to the Chinese media website Bilibili. Each featured a variety of different content, but one specific piece from the CN stream really caught my eye. A live action short film, including a fight scene between Zhongli and Child, made by MediaStorm and VFX Boys. Right away, you can tell that a lot of love was put into the production. That's why in this video, I want to share with you the inspirations and various choices made by the director so that you can fully appreciate this work of art. If you haven't seen the video itself, the link is in the description, but note that the dialogue is in Chinese. Also, thank you to child underscore text on Twitter for providing translations for some of the things said in the behind the scenes video uploaded by the director. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. The main source of inspiration is a relatively obscure genre of Japanese film known as tokusatsu. Literally translating to special filming, it makes heavy use of practical effects to bring fantastical imagery to life on camera. Though technically invented in Japanese kabuki theater a long time ago, the real pioneer of the genre was 1964's Godzilla, created by special effects artist Eiji Tsuburaya and directed by Ishiro Honda. Inspired by the American film King Kong, it established the suitmation technique of having a human actor in costume portraying a giant monster with the scenery shrunk down below them. This started a huge boom to the kaiju genre, but eventually, public interest shifted away from monsters and towards superheroes. Chances are, you're already familiar with the most globally successful tokusatsu show, Power Rangers, and you might also know that it is based on the Japanese show Super Sentai, but you probably don't know about its sister series, Kamen Rider. I personally have been a Kamen Rider fan for years since I found out about it through the one English adaptation it got, and honestly, I am ecstatic to finally have an opportunity to talk about it on this Genshin-focused channel. Kamen Rider, literally meaning Mass Rider, has had many iterations in the 50 long years of the franchise's existence, but a few things remain constant across each one. The story always follows a protagonist who powers up by using a belt to transform after saying the phrase Henshin, coupled with some kind of pose. Then they fight off monsters, ride their motorcycles, and save the world from bad guys. But despite the main demographic being young kids to sell toys to, Kamen Rider storylines are definitely enjoyable for older audiences. They aren't afraid to do things like use character deaths as a plot device, and they don't shy away from exploring real life themes. For example, 2019's Kamen Rider 01, which commented on the ethics of having a society inhabited by sentient robots. So the advantage of having actors transform in terms of filmmaking is that they can have a completely separate suit actor performing the martial arts and stunt work. This is especially practical when you consider that episodes are released on a weekly basis, so having one character portrayed by two different people saves time on training and avoids needing the actors to put the suits on or off. Regarding the suits themselves, unlike Power Rangers slash Super Sentai costumes which are pretty much just a single colored bodysuit, Kamen Rider costumes have an armored look to them. So it's important to find a balance between having unique design qualities without compromising movement capabilities. This is why typically the base of the suit is very flexible, meanwhile parts of the body that don't really move, like the head, torso, shoulders, shins, and forearms, are covered up. There's also other logistics to consider, like the overall weight of the suit and allowing the suit actors to be able to see through their helmets. Well, as best as they can. So naturally, the design process of both Zhongli and Child's suits took a long time. Child's is of course based on his in-game foul legacy form that you see in the third act of his boss fight. Meanwhile, Zhongli's is original, but has inspirations with things like his ponytail, the coattails, and the geo symbol. For the creation, some techniques used includes things like first 3D modeling the individual pieces to get a better sense of scale, and then casting them into a physical form. Also, you could imagine that with the suits requiring so much effort to put on, the suit actors were pretty uncomfortable being stuck in full body suits during warm weather. And by pretty uncomfortable, I mean child suit actor literally had heat stroke two times. Thankfully though, I think he made it out okay. So tokusatsu is generally grounded in practical effects, I'm sure you've seen the Power Rangers shooting sparks out of their weapons and the bad guys exploding before, but in modern times, computer generated effects are also regularly used. Now that CGI is more accessible than ever before, it's not uncommon to sometimes see certain scenes that contain zero live action footage. 
With Kamen Rider, it's usually pretty noticeable, but to get amazing CGI, you kind of need a huge budget and lots of time, which again are luxuries that a weekly series can't exactly afford. In the fan film, I would say that the CGI is executed quite well. After a child's transformation sequence, it starts off small with action effects to give some moments of the fighting a little bit more impact. Then we have Zhongli's transformation sequence, which includes his meteor crashing down, the pieces of the suit forming, and him calling down his spear. With them both fully suited up, the Electro and Geo effects help the fight feel more high stakes. Then they move into a fully CGI space, put in through proper lighting and green screening. It culminates with this super dynamic rotating zooming out shot, which I'm pretty sure has CGI models in place of the actors in order to achieve this. Then finally, there's the big special attack clash, and at this point I'm certain that everything you see on the screen is computer generated. Zhongli and Child are both very well established characters with their own distinct personalities, so the director ensured that a lot of work was put into making sure the actors both looked the part and felt the part. For the visuals of their regular outfits, they were adapted to be more modern to fit in with the setting, though you can clearly see the inspirations in the hair, earrings, and color palettes. Child was also given a few more relevant items, including his scarf, mask, and hydro vision. For their personalities, the director looked at various fan arts to get an idea of which traits stood out the most to the community, and thus incorporated things like Zhongli's antiquated seriousness and Child's brash playfulness. Even the fighting styles used by each are meant to be a representation of their different cultural backgrounds. And of course, the scene at the very end is a good representation of the two characters' relationship and is a direct reference to Zhongli's character tales animation, which pokes fun at the fact that Child, the master of weapons, doesn't know how to use chopsticks. While this was a fan-made film, it certainly was not amateur by any means. As you can see from the credits, a lot of different people worked on this. Just to name a few more things that had to be considered, there's lighting, sound effects, background music, set design, action choreography, securing public locations to film at, all the editing work, and probably much more that I can't think of off the top of my head. Throughout the film, there were many hidden details and references scattered around, so here's some of the ones that I was able to see. The writing placed everywhere is not typical Chinese, but is the same seal script inspired writing from Liyue in the game. In the background of the city, you can see Liyue's Statue of the Seven, and the hood that Zhongli wears is reminiscent of the hood Morax is depicted as wearing. On this tower, you can see the symbols representing the Fatui and the Eleven Harbingers. In the shop, you can see a display with various Mondstadt visions on it, and also more subtly, you can see the camera from Kamen Rider Decade and some ride watches from Kamen Rider Zio. These two seasons respectively celebrated the 10th and 20th anniversary of the series' return from break in 2000, thus they kind of represent the whole entire franchise. The shot composition for Child's transformation is one-to-one -one with how it looks in-game. He also uses the same melee weapon and calls a big whale for his final attack. Zhongli uses his Jade Shield, calls down the Meteor from his Elemental Burst, Planet Befall, and uses his iconic Vortex Vanquisher weapon. In the CGI portion, you can see a bunch of stone steels in the background, just like from Zhongli's elemental skill, Dominus Lapidus. So yeah, I just thought this whole project was really cool and wanted to share the crazy amount of effort that went into it. Obviously, I don't take credit for any of this, so be sure to check out everything that is linked in the description if you're interested. But last thing before we go, if this style of film interests you, I might as well give you some watching recommendations. In terms of how you can watch this stuff, the Toei Tokusatsu World official YouTube channel has the first couple of episodes for a bunch of seasons, but if you want to watch the whole thing, you're gonna have to stick to fan subs. Most Kamen Rider fans will tell you to just find a suit that you think is cool and then go from there, which I definitely support, but here's my top picks. Gaim is renowned for having the craziest story in a good way and is written by Gen Urobuchi, who has worked on other Japanese media like Madoka Magica, Psychopaths, and Fate Zero. X8 has the coolest theme in my opinion, where the powers are based on different video game genres. And for best all around, I have to recommend Double, which follows a pair of detectives and is actually getting its manga sequel animated next year. But yeah, that about does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed, and as always, thank you for watching.